What's going on, dudes? It's your boy, Andy Matrix. I'm back at it again. And, um, you know, I have been uh, researching a lot of the, you know, Chinese gaming market. Well, not necessarily in China, but rather in the West here, like in America, Canada. I've really been looking at what they do, what they've been planning, the games that they're releasing. And I've actually talked about a couple of a couple of these games. You know, I talk about uh, Infinity Nikki. I talked about Black Myth Wukong. I talked about other games like uh, Phantom Blade Zero that's coming out, right? I talked about a lot of uh, ch upcoming Chinese games. Hello, this is Yami Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh! And make sure to subscribe to Andy Matrix's channel. Now on with the show. And um, I can't help but to think, right? I can't help but to think that... Um, China is using ESG, right? It's using ESG, you know, to sell, well, to decrease the sales of American games while selling more of their own video games. So Chinese video games up here, American video games down here, right? You get the point. So look, I want to show you guys something. You know, Tencent has actually been investing in American games so I, I, I didn't even know this but Tencent they have you know they, they have like what 50% stake in in Roblox and a whole bunch of other American games I'm not sure if they're if they're in Square Enix but I know like a lot of the mobile games in, in, in America like you see all those mobile games that are being played a lot of them are funded by by Tencent you know they really have just deep pockets just pockets everywhere just investing into like in games like World of Warcraft and you know I, I can't give you the whole list but it's a lot of games that they they got their money in so Tencent if you go to their website right if you go to the website you will see that they have an annual ESG report an annual ESG report meaning that they do you know they do participate in the whole ESG stuff that you know that's you know being pushed by the by the West but they apply those things outside of China, obviously, outside of China. But uh, they don't do that to their own games. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool strategy. It's kind of, you know, very sneaky, very sneaky, but it's a really good strategy. Now, um, let's take a look at the list of AAA games in the West that have flopped, right? Games in the West that have flopped. So... <clears throat> So if you look at games like Skull and Bones, Borderlands, Foam Stars, Star Wars Outlaws, Alone in the Dark, Dustborn, there was another one, what, uh, Hellblade, Senua Saga, t and yeah, just a whole bunch of, of American games, except for like Spider-Man, Hot Wars Legacy did really good because, I mean, that game was, that game was hot, Hot Wars Legacy was hot, but a lot of games just keep flopping and flopping, kind of like the Hollywood movie industry. You know, it's just one flop after another, and then after after two movies that failed, one of them is actually pretty good, and that's what's happening here. And out of all those games that flopped, you know, there's Hot Wars Legacy, there's Pal World, but hey, Pal World is from a Japanese company, so I mean, I, I don't know how you want to look at that. And then of course there's uh, there's Black Myth Wukong, right? Black Myth Wukong. So 20 million copies, a very, very super successful game. And I was going to say God of War Ragnarok, but I mean, that came out a couple of years ago and now we had the PC version. So I don't know if I should count that. You know, you do the math. So yeah, a lot of flops, you know, just a lot, a lot of flops. Um, then you have Chinese games, which are on the rise. And one of the first signs, and this is like years ago, one of the first signs of like the rise of Chinese games really was Genshin Impact. Okay, Genshin Impact, and nobody nobody saw it coming because a lot of people didn't actually know that Genshin Impact was a Chinese game when it first came out. You know, uh, then we find out that it, you know it was by Mihoyo, and then Mihoyo released what was it, uh, Tower of Fantasy. And then Zenless Zone Zero, right? And but in, in all of those are just like online games, right? They're all online games. But did you know 
that Genshin Impact ever since its release has generated over $7 billion. Uh, Senla Zone Zero has generated over $1 billion. And when Infinity Nikki comes out, man, that that's going to blow everybody out of the park, right? That means Infinity Nikki is going to be a super successful game because it's going to have just, you know, different demographics just playing that game. And it's going to generate probably more than Genshin Impact. There, I say, it's probably going to be more popular than, than Genshin Impact. At least in my opinion, just looking at the game. Again, Black Myth Wukong sold 20 million copies. So again, like, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the, some of the most profitable games are, you know, Chinese games. I, isn't that kind of funny? It's, it's almost like the same thing with TikTok, where, like, TikTok is owned by China, and they're using TikTok to, like, dumb down to make the Western population stupid. And then while... In China, people are actually kind of like getting smarter. So in in America, in Canada, and the UK, we have this this you know TikTok, which is just like brain numbing content, just like a lot of like, oh man, I'm gonna get attacked for saying this, but there's a lot of like low IQ content there, like, and a lot of people that are on TikTok, you know, have this uh, stereotype. <laughs> there's a stereotypical TikTok user right and it, it's really being being dumbed down to the point where like even the, the governor right like the, the the government of the united states wants to like get rid of tiktok right <laughs> and i think it's the same thing with gaming where like you know yeah tencent which is a chinese company they'll they'll apply the whole esg thing on american games but if you if you look at black myth wukong when sweet baby inc you know, try to bribe the, the developers of Black Myth Wukong with $7 million. They were like, nope, sorry, we're not going to do that. And then they just released the game as it is, and it became super successful. Right? So I think that, <laughs> call me a conspiracy theorist, but maybe China is funding ESG to sell more of their video games, while Western video games go absolutely down the toilet. But hey, what do you guys think? Whatever your thoughts are, make sure to comment below. Make sure to share this video with other people. Like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for future notifications. Guys, thank you for watching. It's your boy, Andy Matrix. Godspeed, baby.